All right, welcome to Keep On Growing. I've missed y'all. I know it's been a little while since I put any videos out, but I've been working on some new things, and one of them is right here. I'm really excited about it. It's the best grow box I've ever made, and I want to share it with y'all how y'all can make it. You guys know it's been a really hot summer. Uh, it's been in the 90s and heat index over 100 here in Florida, and I know some of you guys around the country are talking about temperatures over 100, so I know everybody's dealing with this. And uh, so the garden suffered and a lot of people out there I've hear, hear all the stories you know about they're, they're all having a tough time too. Well, I'll show you some pictures of what I'm growing out there right now besides the sweet potatoes that you saw in the last video. I'll put the link up there if you didn't see it. But I got sweet potato leaves all over the place and you can use that as a spinach substitute. But you guys, if you've been with me for any amount of time, you know that I love pak choy. And right now I've got pak choy growing in one of these containers that I made. I'm going to show you exactly how to make it and I haven't done anything to it. Just like most of our other carefree stuff, no watering, no nothing. It's sitting out there in the weather, in the elements and I planted them out and just let them go. And that's why I'm a little late getting this video to y'all because I was letting it go as long as possible. I'm going to see if it's going to bolt or if we'll harvest it or they might die or, or what. So I just kept leaving them and leaving them and I was going to make this video last week and it still looked really good, so I just left it another week, and, and you can see the pictures here. So I was, I'm was i still going to just leave them go because I've got some pak choy growing elsewhere in the garden right now. They're not doing quite as good as this container, but I'm going to let this go and see how long it goes without me doing anything to it. We'll go take a look out there. I'll lift it up, let you see inside. Um, and I want to see how long it can go in this heat all by itself. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about the growing of that but right now in this video I want to go ahead and show you guys how to make this and then the next video that's coming we'll talk about the pak choy and where I situated it how much sun it gets um, but uh, I even measured the temperature of the water for you so we're gonna take a look at all of that in my next video right now let's go ahead and show you guys how to make one of these and basically I'm gonna build it right here in my workshop because it's raining outside so basically it's just made out of five gallon bucket and i think i left the tag on it let me get the other one it's a food grade one if you look on the side they've even got these smaller ones if this one's too big for you they've got these smaller ones but they say food grade and i'll show you a little picture of the the sticker on the big the big bucket over there but it's a food grade container and all you have to do is measure it and cut it in half and what I did was this is the lid I just cut four holes in it we all know how to do that a little hole saw I use a two inch one now you guys stress out about this everybody's I, I use one and seven eighth inch because on down the road if I want to use a two inch neck cup it fits in there just right if you're not going to ever use neck cups you can make these a little smaller you can make them a little bigger it just depends on your pull noodle and that so you don't have to stress out about that unless you're going to use neck cups in the future so I cut four. You can put one in the center here if you want. You can have five. You know, the more holes you cut, the weaker this is going to get. You know, it might sag, but um, it's no problem. I just got four of them in there. You could probably space out five or six around the edge if you want. The reason why I did that is because a five-gallon container, if I cut it in half, you got two and a half gallons. And basically, Dr. Cracky, when he's talking about growing a head of lettuce, he said that you need one gallon of water to grow one head of lettuce. Now. If I got four on here, that means I need four gallons of water. So if we're talking about two and a half gallons, I'm going to have to fill this up like once. And, you know, you don't let it go all the way down and fill it back up. So it's probably going to be a couple of times I just refill a little bit. If you go ahead and put more plants in here, five, six, that means that's all the more you're going to have to keep trying to keep it at a constant level. And it's going to be more work and all the more room for error. So I want to keep this as simple as possible when we're first starting where you can put it out and not even mess with it. And believe it or not, the picture of the pak choy that's in there now, I haven't done anything to it. I haven't added to it or anything. So it's just been out there. A little bit of rain's got in it. Probably diluted the nutrients a little bit. And I just let it go. Like I said, that way if I show you totally carefree what can happen, then if you got time to take care of it and, and if you maintain the nutrients at the right level and um, keep it out of the rain and keep it, you know, get, get the optimum amount of sunshine in that, you probably grow even better plants than I did. So, the first thing we did on this was cut the holes in the lid. So you figured out, 
you know, how many you want, four, five, six, whatever. I'm going four to start off with. And to construct a bucket, I just cut it in half. Let me get a tape measure really quick. All right, the five gallon buckets that I get, now yours might be a little different, so don't use this measurement as gospel. Go and get your bucket and measure it. The buckets that I get are 14 and a half inches tall. Now you can cut that right in half, but that's the first mistake I made on the first one that I built. And that's the one you see in the picture there. That was the experiment, that's the, the first one. Um, I put the lid on it and it just sits on top. And I was afraid the wind was gonna blow it off in that, so there's a big rock in the middle. It's just holding it down. And we never got any wind or anything. I didn't really need it, but the plant started going around the rock. So I just left it in there. So when you see that big green rock in the middle, that's what it was for, it was holding the lid on. Now, if you go ahead and leave this inner lip, if you cut the bottom of it half an inch shorter than the top, then you can have a little lip on the inside, just like this. See how that inside part is a little bit down lower? Make sure that you cut the inside one, the bottom, about half an inch smaller. So this is 14 and a half inches. So you can cut the bottom seven inches and then that's gonna leave you seven and a half inches up on top. Then you can have this lip so that you can take this and you can put it together and smack that on there and this won't come off until it's time to clean and you can pull it back off in that. Now if you just wanna get in and out of there to put your nutrients in, you can do like me, just leave it on top like that, put a little something to hold it down. Then you can lift it up, pour nutrients in. Or you can maybe cut your one extra little hole where you can add your nutrients. You know, there's different things. So um, figure out what's best for you. Now the secret to this whole thing you probably saw already is this yellow stuff. And that's foam. And all I did was I put this middle one inside of that. So if you cut that about half an inch smaller, place them inside of each other, set it down, and then come around with spray foam. And then you got a little bit of insulation in there. And that has kept this water on the inside cool, even though the bottom's not insulated. You know, it sits up off of wherever you're gonna have it. It sits on this little rim. So the bottom's not actually touching the entire table surface of wherever you have it sitting down, only the ring of it. And this is all insulated in here. And I'll show you, we're gonna go ahead and put one together real quick. But I want these little green spots are just to hold the bucket in the middle so it's not like crammed up against one side you only get insulation around one side I just put little pieces of our foam noodle around the edge of it on both sides down on the bottom you see little pieces of green we'll go ahead and put one of these together you can do that or you can get wooden dowels these are a little thin find some thicker wooden dowels and put wooden dowels around the edge of it just something that's going to hold that bucket from sliding to one side to the other and we're gonna spray foam it. And don't worry about it all spilling out and everything because these buckets, brand new, this spray foam just peels right off of it. So don't even worry about it going over everything while you're doing it because you're gonna get real sticky. You wanna spray it and just leave it. If you get in there and start touching it, you're gonna get it all over. It's gonna get over your hands. It won't peel off your hands like this, but it'll peel off this bucket. So don't worry about over spray because you're gonna come back and you can get a razor blade and you just trim it all right down and it peels right away from that. So don't worry about that. So let's go put one together really quick. Go seven inches. this and go easy into it and then go around like that like that punch cut
you have little extra pieces of pool noodle, you can use those. Or if you've got these, let's see if that works. About seven inches. That looks like that may do pretty good. Let's try that. What I did on my last one was just take pieces of foam and just stick it down in there. And I kind of hold it right in the center. You might want to turn it over too and put some on this side. in there so if you want to use these you can just take them mark them mark them cut them down to wherever you need them right and you can use those if you want all right, these I use for my mailing labels, and I know that the foam doesn't stick to it, so I'm going to set them down just like that. I don't think I use these. So, now we've got the pool noodles holding it in place. Got something slick for it to sit on. Using a little great stuff and I've already used this once or twice and I cut it this one if you use that you can make one and when you're done you take this and bend it over and pop it on there and then when you take it off you just cut off the little end and it should be reusable so fingers crossed Now all you want to do is just go around in here and just spray it. And you want it to fill up. And it's not going to work. Nice. Alright, did you get that? <laughs> So how you do, see it's coming right up to the top and it's going to foam a little more so you don't have to get it right to the top and it'll come on up a little, I'll bring you in a little bit closer. foaming up around everywhere we're just gonna leave that go and this is the third one I made out of this and it still feels like so you probably get five or six out of each one of these and it's 
so what you do with this is bend it over, stick it on there, pop it on tight, so that stays on. All right, don't do like me. I'm a big dummy with uh, the spray foam. I used that twice already, and each time I cut the tube a little shorter, a little shorter. So the tube is kind of tiny. Your tube will be a little bigger if you're doing this, and you do more than one. I've got three out of this one so far, and there's enough in the can to do five or six out of that one can. So I think the can costs about four bucks or something. Um, but the tube, I cut the little tip off like I did last time, but inside where the tube screws on to the top of the can, that little nozzle, there was a little bit of spray foam in there that hardened up and sealed it up. So when I first sprayed it, it released some pressure into it, but it wasn't coming out. So when I went to undo it, it, you all probably saw that on the film and it kind of got me across the shirt. See the spray foam stuck on my shirt and it kind of spurted around everywhere. No big deal, but it was a good thing I had this on. There's a little bit on my uh, glasses there. So always wear your safety glasses. And be careful with it when using the spray foam if you're going to reuse it a second time. That's the first time I ever did that. Usually we get a can of spray foam and we use it once and that's it and then we toss it out. So I was trying to reuse it again. Um, so be careful with that. Now we're just going to leave that set like that. And the initial part where it foamed up, let me show you. This initial part that the lights regulate here. When that first foams up, don't get anxious. Let this sit for a good five, six hours. Then you're going to come in and we're going to just trim on the inside with a razor blade and it's going to pop out. You're going to see how easy it is to pop out. And if it's kind of thick in here, if there's any wet spot inside, now that this is air dried and cured, it's going to seal up that moisture. So when you cut this and there's a little bit of moisture, it might foam up a little bit more and seep out of some little cracks. Don't worry about that. If it keeps seeping out, go ahead. That just you sprayed a little too much spray foam in there just let it seep out let it harden up like this and cure and then come back and cut it so let this sit until it's just totally dry and what you might want to do we'll do too is we'll take it once it's completely cured flip it over and see if there's any voids on the bottom you know if i didn't get all the way down there and spray all the way to the bottom flip it over check it you might spray it from the bottom let it sit again basically that's it trim that up put your top on it and, and that's it so we'll go ahead and finish that up I mean, pre pretty easy, right? Most of you can do that. And like I said, if, if any of you don't want to, you know, take on the task of doing it, I'll have it in my Etsy shop. But I think that most of you are a little handy. If you're careful with the spray foam and you're careful with your saw, your jigsaw, be careful with that. Um, you saw me just do a plunge cut into it. If you don't have the right blade to do a plunge cut, just go ahead and drill you a hole, a pilot hole that's big enough for your saw blade to fit through and stick your saw blade in there and then cut. Other than that, it's just, just cutting that in half and then putting your uh, cutting four holes in your lid and you're gonna have one of the best off-grid hydroponic grow boxes around and it's food grade how good can it get right all right so I'm excited about that and look at the pak choy that we grew isn't that fantastic the heat outside is just terrible it's killing everything it, it's hard to grow anything out there and I grew friggin pak choy it's it's awesome I love it I'm going to make a bunch more of these and have these all over the place. This would probably peel off later, but you see where it wasn't quite dry yet. And it left a little bit of sticky. That's why you see still wet and foaming like that. Don't wait till it's like this. It's not sticky anymore. Or is that still? Don't wait till it's like that. 
Okay. So that's how easy it is to put it together. Now we've got an insulated bucket. It doesn't heat up quite as fast. I didn't even paint this one. If you want to paint them black and then paint them white again, you can do that. It's another layer of uh, insulation. Uh, cuts down on the heat even more. It depends how hot it is where you're at. But I think that that works. And if that little bit of insulation, set this down. If that little bit of insulation is not enough for you. Try one of these. This bucket's only three and a half bucks. You might want to go ahead and get cut one of these down and maybe set one of these inside. And then you'll get about an inch of insulation around all sides of it. So just experiment with it. You might want to set this one down and cut this five gallon bucket. Just measure how tall this guy is. Nine inches. So just cut down your five gallon bucket to nine inches and then spray foam on the inside of that. I might even try one of those, that sounds pretty cool. That would give an extra layer of insulation. So I want you guys to go make some, take some pictures, send them in to me, that's cool. If anybody out there wants to try one of these and you don't feel like making it or messing with spray foam and that, I know some of you don't like to do that. I'll go and put this in the Etsy shop and uh, I'll try to sell a couple of them. We'll see, I, I don't know how much time I have to make these and I've already got the other two grow boxes that we're making and the microgreen seeds. If you guys are interested in microgreen seeds, selling a variety pack. And uh, it's pretty cool because you get to taste 17 different kinds of microgreens for 20 bucks. So that's in that's in the shop. I haven't told anybody about that yet. You can go up, go over there and, and get a wide variety of microgreens. And each portion is, is just enough for a 5x5 five five grow pad. So you're not going to have to think how much to put on each one. You're just going to go ahead and, and use one pack in one little 5x5 five five grow pad, and you're all set. Uh, like we said, trying to make everything as simple as possible for everyone. So y'all go make one of these, or uh, go ahead and order one from the Etsy shop. I'll try to get them out to you. But um, if you're handy at all, pretty easy to make. All right, give that a try, and I want to see what you all come up with. Lift and inspire. Keep on growing. Be the change. Much love.